Once again, um, apologies, this is another tech video, but it's a very short one, I can promise you. And it's one that um, I was, I've been meaning to make for a little while, and it's all to do with these beasts. In other words, power amplifiers, uh, tuner amplifiers, that kind of equipment. Especially when you get a fault on them that isn't apparent right away, maybe after it's been on for half an hour, or whether when it's been running uh, at high volume, um, either some distortion creeps in or there's a, uh, something happening to the sound on it. And in order to test that, you've got to run these things at pretty high volume for quite a long period of time and monitoring with a, with an oscilloscope or other test equipment. And that can be very annoying for the neighbours. It can also be very annoying for, for, for me, basically, because you don't want all that sound all the time. One way of overcoming that is to use a dummy load. Um, and so I thought I'd get some cheap components and make up my own dummy load. Now most speakers, um, most output stages, uh, will run between um, 4 and 8 ohms. It's the usual, or 3 and 8 ohms even. It's the usual loading that the output transformers require. Um, so uh, a dummy load of about 4 ohms is usually pretty good. Um, and, but it does need to be a fairly high wattage. So what I've done is ordered some, uh, some resistors um, and uh, they arrived recently. I've got some aluminium from the local metal shop um, and uh, I've got some other sockets and bits and pieces just to put together a dummy load. So I'd like, just like to share that with you now and demonstrate how it works. So the components I've got for this are some wire round um, 4 ohm 50 watt resistors, um, some banana plugs and some terminal posts. Um, the resistors I got from eBay, uh, 4 ohms, so I'm going to uh, use them in series to make up an 8 ohm load for each channel. Um, they seem quite good and obviously you need 4 of those for, for uh, 2 8 ohm loads um, on the channels. Other components needed are some um, pillar connectors. Uh, you can get those again from eBay, an assortment of them. Um, and some banana plugs to make your connections to your speakers. And also some fairly thick gauge aluminium. Um, once you've got all that together, it's just the hard work of uh, assembling it. Well, after a couple of hours um, hard work, uh, here is the assembled unit. Um, as you can see, I've mounted the uh, four resistors on top of the heat sink. It looks, they look quite smart, I think, anyway. And um, two 4 ohm resistors in series for each channel to give uh, an 8 ohm load for each channel. And then the, um, the pillar studs for connecting the cable to the, uh, to the speakers. I think you'll agree that um, having that sign going through um, and this is at low volume for hour after hour uh, will be quite annoying uh, not only for me but for the neighbours as well so um, let's uh, see how the dummy load will overcome this so here we have the speakers disconnected and uh, the dummy load connected across the speaker the uh, audio output um, forum outputs on the amplifier uh, and I've got a signal generator going in, it's on full whack, the volume is up full on the amplifier. Um, the signal generator uh, is connected across there. Obviously don't forget to uh, isolate your, your scope because of earth loops. Um, you don't want to damage anything or blow anything up. So I've just got a, a capacitor 0.01 uh, capacitor in the, um, in the earth uh, loop. Uh, that's causing the, the scope display to be slightly distorted um, and uh, 
but this is only a demonstration. I'm not really doing any accurate measurements here. Um, but it just shows that uh, I can now um, feed a signal generator into that amplifier um, and test it uh, as long as I want on, on a dummy load. Um, the problem I've already identified with this amplifier, it's only working on one channel, hence I've only got one channel of the scope connected. So I've got to do some fault finding to find out uh, why one channel is down on it, but uh, the left channel does work rather well, and um, there it is. So that's the, the dummy load um, connected to test an amplifier without having to pump full power through the speakers um, for long periods of time. One third, further check I've made on, on this dummy load is to connect a digital thermometer um, via a thermocouple um, just to measure the temperature. The whole thing is just bearable to touch, but you can keep your finger there for too long. And if you look at the digital meter, it's recording a value of around 51 degrees. It's difficult to see on, on that. It's uh, not very clear on the segments, um, but about 51 degrees. And that seems to be fairly steady, and that's with the amplifier at full volume. Well, that's about it, really. Um, still a little bit warm, um, because I, I must admit I had that amplifier on full whack. Um, but uh, it's a useful device for, for, for fault finding and, and uh, um, soap testing amplifiers. Um, I think if it's any more powerful than that, I would need to make up the 100 watt one and a little bit bigger heat sink, um, uh, maybe with a fan. But um, for purposes of, of, of that amplifier and for a, a couple of hours test, that did the job absolutely perfectly. Probably not used an awful lot, but there it is, and it works. And um, it didn't cost an awful lot to build, I suppose, altogether with bits, around about £20. Hope you found this interesting, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching.
Alright, stick your up. And get in at the negotiations. Trying to raise money.